Welcome home, YouTube family, where watch collecting never changes. Only the time needed to win them. So for a special bobble-headed perk to my channel this year, I thought it would be rad to show you my small but unique Fallout watch collection, and also throw in some extra perks to anybody subscribing to my channel. I have been making videos for years now, and I would be ecstatic to reach the 1,000 subscriber mark for sure. So in order to get closer to that goal, I will be giving away three of the very watches you see today to three subscribers who also like the video and watch till the end. The winners will be tiered into first, second, and third place and then announced on New Year's Day in the video description below. The choices will be entirely random by me. Comment if you like, but no, I will be keeping the watches I give away a secret. So without further ado, let's open the vault, peer into the wasteland, and choose a watch to start our journey. Let's set out with our vault Tech Custom Watch. The specs come in at 42 millimeters on the dial and an 11.8 millimeter thickness with a 20 millimeter bandwidth. And I'm talking strap size here, not internet speed to clear up any confusion. I just love this strap. It's a great one. I wish it had quick releases and it may be near perfect at that point. Um, it does have a sapphire crystal on the front of this one and a really beautiful exhibition case back with some great looking details. So let's take a look at that really quickly here. There you go. Wow, that is just pretty. I love the machining there. They've done a really good job on this one just to make that look uh, just fabulous in every way possible. Hmm, and if we look at those gears, they are faintly reminiscent of something else. Maybe with a little imagination, we could see what that is. This movement is an Asian 6497 mechanical hand wind on this one. Has some really good reviews in the watch community. So I decided to have this one made to homage the official Bethesda release seen here and save myself around 850 caps or so. And I'll tell you, AliExpress is the Richard Moreau of homage watches and I highly recommend you check them out for any custom work just like this one. Let me know in the comments if anyone caught that reference. I will also put a link down below to the custom store that you can get this watch from so you can get one for yourself if you're so inclined. Uh, I love me some pilot style watches and this one pays excellent tribute and homage to one of the best game franchises of all time in my opinion. Really good one all around. Vault Boy gives this one two thumbs up. And speaking of upward thumbs, we come to our next watch. The Super Mutant Behemoth of my collection. I say that because this case size is a whopping 52 millimeters and the thickness is 11.6 millimeters. The width of this band is about 22 uh, millimeters, so mostly just girthy to look at on the wrist. And by the way, this band is not the original band that comes with it. It usually comes with a brown brown band. This is just one that was put on afterwards. Uh, this one is uh, looks like it has been worn while fighting an um, albino gator claw, in my opinion, unfortunately. But hey, uh, it's just a novelty piece, really. It's an Accutime brand, uh, so it's rare, but not numbered. And by the way, I'll be selling some of these after the video on my eBay store at the username seen here. As I list them, I will leave links below if you're interested. This watch has a Japanese quartz movement and definitely gives off that overcompensating vibe. So wear at your own risk. And now for the Yao Guai in the room, we come to another custom by Mark Simpson from his Etsy store uh, named Broad Arrow Jack based in England. I'll also leave a link to his store if anyone would like to buy a watch from him. Uh, so this custom leather job really gives off those steampunk vibes. Uh, and it's reminiscent of a watch you might catch a glimpse of in uh, like Fallout, a Fallout 4 mod room. Uh, so very cool if you're looking for something to go down a rabbit hole with on a cosplay costume. Uh, the watch brand is an Excelsior. Excelsior. Uh, no relation to Stan Lee, of course. And it has a hand-wound mechanical movement with a 39.4 millimeter case size and a 12.3 millimeter thickness on the side there. It's pretty thick on the side. But um, this custom leather work uh, looks really nice and it has that freshly slaughtered Brahmin aroma as well. But let me go ahead and open this up and give you a look at that real quick. As you can see, there's the custom job. Looks awesome. They did a great job on this one here. I'm really digging it. Here's the back. 
And again, um, I wish I could show you, there you go. There's the back, it's a little bit of a skeletonized look there on the back, very cool looking uh, watch for sure. So the thick bracelet portion can be worn alone without the watch, uh, if you so desire, so pretty cool. This actually reminds me a little of the Loco, Loco Fallout inspired watch that is extremely hard to get, but if you do happen to find one, it will run you anywhere from about $1,500 to $2,500. I know I didn't want to get that deep in debt for this video, so I passed that one up and settled for this. Maybe once I pass the 5,000 subscriber account, I'll get that watch and I'll do an in-depth review for all of you. In any case, as far as I know, this is a one-of-a-kind rarity that I could only wear at a Comic-Con or perhaps on a steam engine train ride. So here we have the closest thing to a pit boy without the 80s brick of a cell phone attached to your arm. But is it worth its weight in caps, or is it just death claw fodder? With a comfortable case size of 43 millimeters and a sleek uh, thickness of 12.7 millimeters, you'll be walking your way to achievements with a step tracking feature and a lazy waste of life reminder when you've been sedentary for too long. When it's time to rest your weary soul, a sleep monitor will keep track of your heart rate when the rest of the world could care less. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth feature has been retired, so the watch won't connect to phones due to the lackadaisical nature of 161, the obvious wrong choice of a company uh, chosen to make this digital disaster. Is it cool to look at? Yeah, but plan on less than 15 hours of gazing at the tech due to the battery not holding a charge. You can turn on the power saving mode on which it may give you a hair more juice, um, but not the best here. So let's. Uh, Let's look at this a little closer here in the light. Um, I have a charger on it now just to keep it running. Um, it has a really nice comfortable band like I mentioned. Um, very nice rubbery, uh, no hard edges on that band. Um, nice colorations on it uh, for the most part. Um, very sleek looking like I mentioned before. But let me turn it back on here. If you swipe left, you can see that there are some settings there that you can go through on this one. Um, unfortunately, like I said before, the Bluetooth settings will not let you uh, connect with everything here because it is retired, it is done. They're, they are no longer uh, providing Bluetooth assistance. So, um, like I said, a lot of tweaks. I, I do like the idea of this watch. Um, like I said, everything's very sleek on it, but for the love of Tenpenny Tower, we as devoted faction members to this game deserve a real world digital timepiece. I'm afraid this will turn you from a sole survivor into Mylurk meat in a real wasteland setting. All of my griping aside, I guess it proves to be some nice eye candy for about half the day. For our second AccuTime brand and much better executed watch, we have another quartz directly from China. It is an SL68 movement, and although not numbered, it is still fairly hard to find. Coming in at about 46 millimeters on this case size and 12 millimeters thickness on the side, uh, this also wears a bit large on the wrist, and you know it seems like there's a predominant trend with most of the watches that pay homage to this franchise, and I want answers. Yep, that's directed at you, Bethesda. Now, recently, they have been dialing it back, literally, when they recently re released their newest additions to the Fallout world of watches. I'm talking about the 25th anniversary and then the Nick Valentine watch, which I will talk about uh, one of shortly. But back to this fella here. Uh, this is pretty undeniable what game this represents, and that's more than I can say for a few of these watches today, so kudos on using your mascot wisely. Here's the back of this one. Let me show you that really quick. There you go. Still got the protective covering on that, but that's what you'll see on the back. Um, kind of a rubber strap that it comes with there. Wears quite comfortably. I do like it uh, for the most part. It's not a bad, bad watch, actually. So I uh, give it props for, for that. Everything considered, this is a fun and fairly cheaper option to sport your Fallout addiction. All right, so first things first, on this particular watch, I kind of wanted to show you the loom on it because it's quite spectacular. So let's turn off this light here. Let's uh, go ahead and light this sucker up and you're gonna see the magic before your eyes on this watch. I really, really love the loom. All you loom lovers out there, pay attention. Look at that. The Vault Boys lit up. That's so cool. I love it. Uh, good on you, Bethesda, for making a watch that does this. Bad on you for giving me loom that doesn't last longer than it should. So there you go. Really cool looking, in my opinion. I love it. So I bet you think this is also an AccuTimer, don't you? 
Well, it's not. We are increasing the build quality ever so slightly to the Meister variety. Now, I do like this watch, and it all starts with that 42.5 millimeter case size. Uh, the thickness isn't too shabby either at 12.7, so it's a vault boy step in the right direction as indicated on the dial. Inside, uh, you'll be going Japanese with a Miyota 2035 quartz movement. Now, if we focus on this dial, there are some hidden treasures here. Let me take it off this so you can take a little closer look here. Uh, starting from the bottom, we're going to see a radiation symbol. Very fitting. But then if we move left, we have a shield right there. I don't know if you can see it too well. Sorry, let me get the light on it better. You can kind of see it there. But um, there's a shield there, and I'm not, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure what that shield represents. If you can see that shield okay, I'd like for you to maybe tell me in the comments if you know what that is from. Um, so, yeah, just been racking my brain to figure out what that is over there. Um, if you can lead me in the right direction, I may consider you worthy of uh, the prize after a verified subscription and like that is. Moving to the top, of course, we have a mini nuke at the top, as you can see there in the light. And so that's really cool. And to the best of my knowledge, I would say that that right symbol that you can actually see. In fact, let me get the light on that so you can see that shield better, too. Let's see, there we go. Now you can actually see that shield. Anybody know what that is, please tell me in the comments. That would be greatly appreciated. So, um, on the right, I think to the best of my knowledge, I would say that that is a army helmet over there. That's what it's appearing to be. Uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, and you just may impress me. So real quick, uh, we, we, uh, we did light it up with the uh, loom, so you got to see that. That was awesome. Um, let's see. I love that they did that. I, I didn't expect the Vault Boy to be luminescent uh, so good from Meister, but it was, and it looked awesome. So yeah, this watch is one of the better ones to actually own if you're wanting to represent, I think, on Fallout. This is actually a strap I put on it, aftermarket strap. 22 millimeters is the uh, band size on that. I'm sorry, 21 millimeters is the band size or band width on that one. Um, this is a Barton band. It comes with a black uh, le leather type band initially. But I just kind of like the contrast with this one a little bit better. Um, final analysis on this watch, it is Vault Boy approved. Straight out of the Meister Institute and onto our wrist, we now have the beloved Nick Valentine Special. You'll need to be an attentive Fallout connoisseur to recognize this watch by the symbol there on the front. And as keen as Nick Valentine was trying to track down the mysterious stranger. Man, if wearing this thing gives me a 16 in intelligence, chain me to the wall, right? I love it. And at a 40 millimeter case size and a 12.5 uh, millimeter thickness, it hits the sweet spot all day. I love how they simulated the dial to fit Nick's appearance. Um, an open heart approach with a skeletonized feel. And of course, a open case back to display the 2650SSZ movement right there. That's what you're getting. Uh, a little bit cloudy because I didn't take off the protective back yet, but really cool nonetheless. Got your Fallout logo there on your band. Genuine leather is what they're claiming on that, but not a bad looking band either with this watch. Really like this one. Uh, really, really well so far. I'm digging it. Uh, don't forget the 17 jewels this guy has inside as well. Uh, being that there are only 500 of these worldwide, um, you'll also get a certificate when you purchase it new. Um, you can get these on the Bethesda website for about 150 US dollars, and in the Fallout world, that is a lot of bang for the buck on this one. So my advice is to pick, pick up this sexy synth uh, today and go into tomorrow with no regrets. Here's looking at you, sweetheart. Well, back to huge case sizes at 45 by 13 millimeters, and this one had such potential. Not only is this a chunk of change, but its chunkiness precedes it. I think I would like it much better with some more standard dimensions and an automatic movement, especially for the $350 they are asking for it. So instead of greatness, they decided to go with the Miyota 2036 quartz movement. Not sure what Meister was thinking here, to be honest, but... Um, it is what it is. Maybe the vault administrator was a chode, so they decided to skimp on his watch. I don't know, but no sapphire crystal to speak of, and this subtle dial uh, just isn't doing it for me. Not to mention this weighs as much as a vault door at about 206 grams. 
uh, and the wrist. So yeah, mm, not too too happy about that. But there you go, butterfly clasp. Um, there's the back, best you can see it there, with the Vault 11, 111 from Fallout 4. Um, so man, this thing is thick and meaty and juicy for sure. Um, there you go, the metal strap. It doesn't look too bad. If you have a huge wrist, it might actually look okay on you, but otherwise this is going to be a nightmare for a six and three quarter inch person like myself. So not a very good watch for me. Uh, my wish list is to change the dimensions for sure. Um, uh, I think that uh, Bethesda needs to be proud of their creation and pay reference to Fallout uh, with at least uh, which vault door we're looking at. Um, you know, I think on the back it does tell us, but on the front it would be nice to have that as well, or something referring to Fallout 4. Uh, even maybe an Overseer font on the dial could help this immensely in identifying as a Fallout collectible. I guess if you have a 7.5 inch wrist and want no one to know what games you like, you'll be happy as a horned kangaroo. Uh, I'm, I'm a mad vault boy right now. Out of the depth of the crater in the glowing sea, we find an irradiated watch that is guaranteed to give its wearer walking ghost syndrome. And let me show you what I mean, guys. This thing has some killer loom on it. I couldn't, did not expect this, but this is way cool. When is it that you get to see a reactive band? That's pretty cool. You don't see that every day. Plus a full loom dial for the most part. See how that band's glowing? That's just so cool. I love it. I'm so glad that they decided to include a glow-in-the-dark band on this one or a reactive band. Look at that. That looks so nice. So, so cool, guys. Very nice. I really dig it. Fun, fun watch all the way. I'm talking about the glow-in-the-dark uh, Rad Glow AccuTime watch here. Yep, another one. And it's a Think Geek exclusive. This one rocks thoroughly with a PC21J Japan Quartz movement. Uh, it's not trying to be anything but a novelty and an experience to wear. So this one starts out at about 45 by 12 millimeters thick. Um, it's not breaking any records or anything, but definitely has a presence on your wrist. Um, I like when the purpose of a watch is fully known by its appearance. And this one really just slaps you across the face like a 94th Academy Award ceremony. That said, I don't have a huge problem with a little bit larger uh, case size. With this watch, I would gladly take a dose of between 2 to 10 sieverts daily to show my dedication to the almighty fallout. For all you watch purists out there, I bring to you the indestructible G-Shock straight up with a twist. I have never seen a good official Nuka watch yet, so I decided to make one. That's right, using laser technology. I had to beef up my science skill to experiment outside the box with this one, and I wasn't sure if the resin would take an engraving, but it worked really well. So I guess now I have a Nuka Protection and G-Shock Cola to wash it down. So at a very comfortable 42 millimeters by 13 millimeters on the uh, thickness there. Um, this watch is uh, very comfortable and it's a candidate, really good candidate for modification. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I'm very happy with how it came out, as you can see. Um, it looks fabulous. Did a great job on it. Had some help with this one from some uh, some two good friends of mine. Um, so, you know, I, I thought the red case would fit the Nuka world perfectly. And this really is a reliable watch for some Nisha hunting in Nuka world, if you happen to visit. And just like that, we will end our Fallout watch tour and giveaway. And remind you, all that is needed to win one of these three timepieces is to subscribe and like the video. Think of leaving a smart comment also, and it may aid in my choice of winners. If you are sick of not ever winning anything, I've got a juicy stim pack with your name on it. Why not start the year right by adding to or building up your collection by depleting mine? What do you got to lose other than time? From me to you, I say thank you for watching. I really hope you had fun and enjoyed the video. This is G1 Toys, signing out.